Yeah, okay. This is about the Hollywood strike. Um, I know we've heard a lot about mm -hmm. it, and some people are kind of ambivalent. There are some inf inf uh, interesting tidbits about this, this strike that's happening, which is the largest strike happening currently in the United States between the writers and the actors, I believe. Damn! I believe it's somewhere around half a million employees of the studios that are out there on the picket lines and solidarity to them. Great thumbnail by Crab, by the way. Um, so this lady, Emily, uh, Elaine Lowe, she works with a, an organization called Strike Geist. And they're, they're an offshoot of Vanity Fair. Some guys, he got pissed off with the way Vanity Fair was covering stuff. He's like, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to cover it. I'm going to talk to the actual strikers. Novel concept, right? So here are the this is what happened. Now, this is what actually set off the firestorm last week. Back last uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Wednesday. The the list of all of the dem of of, of it is exactly Wednesday, my dudes. Yes, that Wednesday, all of these studios' proposals to the writers was released and published, and it wasn't supposed to be. About a week and a half after the Alliance of Motion, Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers and the Writers Guild of America resumed contracts contract talks, the negotiating unit representing Hollywood Studios has released the details of its counter proposals to the writers. Among the items in the proposed package in the AP, AMPTP's words, significantly higher wages, but no specifics, and increases to high-budget SVOD, uh, you know, straight-to-video video-on-demand residuals. Increases, but not exactly what. A new structure to train writers to become the showrunners of tomorrow uh, by guaranteeing the length of employment and requiring at least... Two, that at least two mid-level writers chosen by the showrunner be at least be assigned to production. That sounds nice. Mm. Yeah, we got. Except they're going straight to AI. Right, a guaranteed minimum of ten weeks employment for writers in development rooms. Viewership data that will be provided to the WGA that will include total straight-to-video on-demand hours per title. The assurance that a writer will mm. not be disadvantaged if any part like of the script... Aladdin, Aladdin 9, straight oh. to DVD. There you go. The writer uh. will not be disadvantaged if any part of the script is based on generated AI-produced material so that the writer's compensation, credit, and separated rights will not be affected by the use of GAI-produced material. On that new structure, though, given the high angst over staffing minimums and the duration of employment minimums... Um, this is likely to be going to be the page of most interest to many a writer. And they literally published it. Which is the guaranteed minimum employment in development rooms. Um, this includes a 15% increase for back backup script fees and a 50% increase for pilot scripts for high budget SVOD series. There's, there's a lot of specifics and detailed numbers in here. Um, a minimum of 10 weeks, like we said, this is the one. The WGA did not immediately respond for, for comment late Tuesday, um, and they have the full proposals in their press release. So what do we make of them? Well, we'll have a more thorough breakdown and analysis, but the first thing that happened after this happened, so th they work with a, an organization called The Ankler. They're all, they also have a substack, The Ankler, and they report on Hollywood News. But then the Ankler developed this offshoot called Strike Geist that is specifically dedicated to reporting on the Hollywood writer's strike. So what happened? Here's how the writers responded to the studios. Neither nothing nor, ne nor nearly enough. All right. So bad and so depressed and so scared is the human toll of the summer strike. So that's Maria Riva who's picketing outside Sunset Bronson Studios. And she says to WGA, your deal is dead to me, as to, to the studios. We're now 115 days into the writer's strike. We have something resembling progress and maybe something portending further doom. The Writers Guild of America wrote a lengthy letter to its 11,500 or so members this afternoon, offering a blow-by-blow -blow of the negotiations, something it said it wanted to avoid doing, after the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers released the details of its proposal package Tuesday night, a move that backfired in spectacular fashion. 
You can now read the full text below, but the gist is that the AMPTP's counter to the union's demands were not nothing nor nearly enough, uh, which the WGA called a version of giving with one hand and taking back with the other. The guild plans to keep plugging away for counter that fully addresses that's its concerns. The phrasing mm -hmm. on that. That's some, that's some phrasing right there. That is. Again, right? What was that giving with one hand while taking back with an, with the other? So you got like a reach around and a... Okay. Yep. yep. Um, so rather than accept half measures like those mentioned above and other proposals not listed here, uh, they're, they're going to go and keep plugging away. So to recap, the studios had offered, among many things, significantly higher wages, bumps in high budget, straight to video on demand of residuals, a new structure to train future generations show run, uh, showrunners, right? Guarantee minimum 10 weeks employment, yep. some broad language about AI productions, and quarterly reports of viewership data that will include the total aggregate number of minutes in a high budget SVOD program. That doesn't mean anything. To which the WGA essentially said, well, well told, good start, but we haven't gone on strike for nearly four months for this. So according to the Guild, here are a few examples of areas they've made proposals that are not yet good enough. In screen, they proposed a second step, but only for a statistically tiny category of screen screenwriters, including all but the first screenwriters of original screenplays, they dismissed the concept of weekly pay. Greedy bastards. They have seeded... Wild. Yes, they have seeded, selected but insufficient minimum terms for some, but not all, Appendix A writers in Straight to Video On Demand. For example, while comedy variety is covered, game show writers, daytime writers, and all other Appendix A writers are not covered. Why? What? In television, the companies have introduced the notion of an MBA guarantee of minimum staff size and duration, but the loopholes, limitations, and omissions in their modest proposal, too numerous to single out, make them essentially toothless. Teams of two writers would receive P&H contributions as individuals, but not teams of three or more. What? We have had real discussions and seen movement on their part regarding AI protections, but we are not yet where we need to be. As for one example, they continue to refuse to regulate the use of our work to train AI to write new content for a motion picture. Gross. Finally, what? yep. Finally, the companies say they've made a major concession by offering to allow six WGA staff to study to study limited streaming viewership data for the next three years, so we can return in 2026 to ask once again for a viewership-based residual. And in the meantime, no writer can be told by the Writers Guild Association about how well their project is doing, much less receive a residual based on that data. Which they're trying to give them, like, oh, no, we'll tell you the numbers, but we're not going to do anything about that. Right. So like, just, even if it does do well, you are not going to be compensated for it doing well. Nope. No. You're, so get your money now. Uh, imagine that in any other, any other job, you, you, you know, your candy bar suddenly becomes the best candy bar out there. Like, and they don't give you a kickback for, like, making it. You know? Like, you wrote the recipe. Like. That's your creative. You, know I mean? you know what I mean? That's like, for example, if Jesse Jett wrote a song, he said, we'll pay you one time for that, and not every time we play that song, even though he wrote it, and he's entitled to be, to be paid for it every time. Right. Yeah. Despite all the communiques and whispers that have ultimately made their way to the press and the outcry on social media about various tactics, this arguably constitutes progress. Oh, God, they're shit libs. God, are they shit libs. The downside is that despite the week starting off on a hopeful note, with some surmising that a deal could be made by Labor Day, the odds of that appear to be increasingly slim. Yes, they do, because the studios already said they're willing to hold out for the rest of the year. They have enough content in the, in the hopper to do it. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, this newsletter to read the full letter to membership, which I'm not going to do, but I did want to, um, this is a podcast that they did at the Ankler. Um, Peter Kiefer did this feature. He broke down and in, it's, it's like a mutual fucking and both sides just seem to suck right now. And the only loser is everyone. 
said a top manager at a firm that recently asked its principals to take salary cuts to avoid laying off any assistants or staffers. Because, of course, managers at firms, I don't know what firm they're talking about. I don't know if it's like an an, an agency for actors, but, you know, all the, the, the feeder industries that serve Hollywood, they're all dying right now. Craft services and everyone because of this shit. Because the studios are greedy motherfuckers. Greedy motherfuckers. So I will say it over and in over. In this story, we got we got Peter Kieferman. Thank God for my reefer, man. Uh, uh, and the Ankler, which sounds like the worst Marvel villain. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. The, is that like the ankle the biter? Ankler. Yeah, the ankle biter. That's, right, that's yeah, I mean. like, yeah, it's just a chihuahua and a cape. Right. <laughs> you know the idea that the, the strike angler. appears to be stretching into the, to the uh. fall is no small matter both physically and logistically For the past eight years thanks to streaming's non-stop churn the film and television the film and tv industry has become less seasonal but the coming months traditionally have remained one of the busiest periods of production in la films that shoot in the fall typically are required to wrap by mid-december to avoid the surcharge on productions that occurs when shooting over the holiday According to several executives, yeah. the further the strike extends into the fall, the more likely that certain projects won't get an official green light until the new year, 2024, even if a deal is struck weeks earlier. Well, they're not going to start production only to shut it down over the holidays, sure. And with festival season yeah. and Oscar season about to, stay, to kick off, the predictable get-your-engine-started high-wattage start of award season, not to mention fall TV, is zero to sluggish at best. There is no fall TV anymore. It's nonsense. There is no prime time anymore. There is no network TV anymore. Worse, just a few days ago, the mood within the industry was hopeful. The silence surrounding negotiations suggested that progress was being made and a tentative deal could be announced at any moment. But, of course, after the studios released details of its August 11th offer, recriminations re re recommenced, likely setting a deal back by at least several weeks. So that's the full story on Maine with a paid subscription. Can't afford the Ankler. If you're an assistant student or getting your foot in the door, want to help navigating the craziness of the business, Richard is the guy who started the Ankler. Message him and he'll get you access to it. They also put up... Wow. Yeah. They also put up kind of like a little bullet of today in strike news, and they do this every day. Uh, I like the fact that they use my name. No, I'm kidding. That's They're literally talking about independent film producers. They, they can't lock in casts due to the time it takes to obtain an interim casting agreement and hope the sag after can begin to fast track their grants. Um, yeah. Indie media. Uh, these studios are such greedy fucking bastards. Let me just tell you. This is great. Walt, greedy Walt, bastards. Walt Keller. Dressed up like Mr. Rogers. Won't you pay our labor? Yep. You greedy dirtbag. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Shout out to Elaine. Shout out to Strikeist and the Ankler. And shout out. Shout out to uh, George Kramer. Um, sure. Blaine. Um, I know Ahsoka just came out. A few Gary. things just came out this week. And uh, again, I, I don't subscribe. I mean, I'm subscribed to these services for my kids. I never watch any of this stuff. The only thing I will watch is stand up on Netflix. Like stand up comedy is all I can watch at all on anything corporate owned anymore. Like, cause it's just a real person talking about mostly stories of their life. And that was great. Um, I watched Paul Verzi the other night. He was excellent. So definitely uh, check him out mm -hmm. on Netflix. Um, Mastermind has a movie script. He needs to get green light of Mastermind Hour. Nice. Send it over to me. Just kidding. 